This message comes to you from Withenshaw Community Church, Manchester. We hope that you are inspired and challenged by God's Word. It might be a mountain in your marriage, no matter what you do, you just feel like you just can't stay together. It just always conflicts. Uh, it could be a mountain in your career. It feels like whatever you do, whatever, how hard you work, doesn't matter how much time you put in, how much you develop yourself, you just don't seem to be able to get what's due to you, that promotion, and, and you just face with this mountain. It could be uh, in singleness. How many know it feels like uh, every time uh, you find the right person, you think it's the right person, but it just turns out to be not the right person. So you, you, you stayed in this singleness uh, season. It could be a mountain in your health and, 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 and the doctors, uh, the experts have said you will never get well. It could be different mountains and we have all different mountains in our lives this morning. And my message this morning is titled Mountain Move. Mountain move. We want to move some mountains this morning. So before I get started, I want us to pray and, and commit the service to the Lord. Father, we just want to pray right now that you take control over this service. Let everything that comes out of my mouth be from you. Father, we just want to pray that you open our hearts. Our hearts are open to you, Father. We're at the open space. Come and do what you need to do. Father, we just uh, commit everything to you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this morning, I want us to turn to Zechariah chapter 4. Out of uh, respect to God's word, can I ask that we all stand as we read the word of God this morning? And uh, I want to read from uh, chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. And uh, you can maybe yeah, join me in that. So he said to me, this is... The word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstones to shouts of God bless it, God bless it. Now, before we go to the next uh, verse... I just want to remind you, sometimes we are faced with mountains, and I just want to encourage you. Sometimes you don't need to curse your mountain. Like I said, you need to bless your mountain. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because that mountain is going to make you into a man or woman that God destined you to become. You see, those mountains... As a result of going through those mountains, you will become bigger and better because of the opposition you encounter and because of the obstacles you're going through. When you overcome those things, you will get out of it a testimony. A testimony. How many know we all want a testimony, but we don't want to go through a test? Isn't that true? In order to get a testimony, you need to go through a test. That's, that's how your testimony comes. So don't curse your mountain, bless it, because it's going to turn you into the greater man and woman of God that God wants you to become. Amen. All right, verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Please take your seats. Thank you very much for that. Um, now, let me give you some context um, on, on our text this morning. It's important to know what we just read. Um, Zechariah was a very young man when he was called into ministry by God. He was sent with a word from God to the Israelites and the man of God. Now, more than a decade earlier, about 50,000 exiles had left, uh, were given permission by uh, one of the kings from Persia, to go back and rebuild the altar and the temple of God. So these people had gone back to rebuild the altar and the temple, uh, and now the leader, the work had actually stopped. Uh, they only managed to rebuild the altar. So the altar was built, but the temple wasn't built yet. Now the, the leader of the Jewish exile was Zerubbabel. And now he's looking at this rubble. He's looking at this rubble, at this unfinished building with a sense of discouragement. Now, he had a vision. God had given him a vision, 
and a task to do, but he couldn't see how provision was going to come. So he was faced with this mountain. Now Zerubbabel even got to a place where he started questioning God. God, is this what you called me to do? Zerubbabel was facing this giant mountain of discouragement and disappointment. It was in this place of discouragement and disappointment that God sent the prophet with a message for Zerubbabel. You know, it wasn't just a message for Zerubbabel. I believe it's a message for us even today. And it's a powerful word for everyone who's faced with discouragement this morning. Anyone that's faced with discouragement, anyone had a vision but hasn't come to pass yet. For anyone who has a promise from God but just not seen it yet. I'm sure we all can write our list of discouragements, helpless, hopeless situation that we are currently facing. We can all have a big list of things. So this word is a word for you and speaks to you this morning. You see, you don't need another sermon. <laughs> you don't need another sermon. What you need is a word from God. You need a word from God, and that's what you need this morning. And uh, my first point is, what you need this morning is a word from God. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. This is where it starts when we talk about moving mountains. It starts with a word from God. Four words said, let there be light. And what was it? Everything spoke into existence, right? And there was light. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. So the word spoke mountains and oceans and stars and planets and galaxies uh, into existence. And if God can do that with four words, what are you worried about this morning? Now seriously, what are you worried about this morning? There is no such thing as easy or difficult for our Lord. There is no such thing as possible or impossible for our God. The word does not return void. And our God is watching over his word to perform it. I'm telling you. So this morning, if you need a, to see a mountain move in your life, you need a word from God. And the way you get the word from God is through the Bible. How I many you know this is the most important thing in your life? This is your manual to life. If you want to avoid mistakes, you need to get hold of this. Because it will teach you what you need to succeed in life. What you need to do is always be on the lookout for a scripture that can speak, a promise of God that can speak to the mountain or the problems that you're facing. And then we need to learn how to pray God's promises. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are what? They are yes. In who? In Christ. And through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. We need to believe and trust our Lord. We need to believe the person that made those promises. We need to actively hold on to those promises of God and declare them by faith. Regardless of what you've seen, regardless of your situation, you need to speak that over your situation. Now, listen, Zechariah verse 4, verse 6, it said, He said to me, not by might, nor by power, by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Now, do you know what is the answer to every prayer? What do you think is the answer to every prayer? It's more of Holy Spirit. More of Holy Spirit. You see, by my spirit. We need more of Holy Spirit. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Christ from death dwells in you and also dwells in me. We need more of Holy Spirit. And that's my second point. What you need is more of Holy Spirit. God wants to do things through you that you are, that's way beyond your ability. God wants to do things in your life that is beyond your intellect. 
God wants to do things in your life that's beyond your resources. God wants to do things in your life that's beyond your imagination even. Why? So that you can take credit for it. Listen, God doesn't want you to take credit for it. So he gets the glory when the mountain is moved. So why don't we just pray this over ourselves this morning? Come Holy Spirit. Fill me. Stretch me. And anoint me. Not by might. Nor by power. But by the Spirit, says the Lord. I want you to focus on verse 7. It says, What are you, mighty mountain? What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. I don't know what mountains you're facing this morning. I don't know. It could be a mountain of fear or anxiety. It, it might be a mountain of failure, a mountain of bondage, or even a mountain of addiction. You tried whatever you can with your own ability, you're just not able to shake it off. Maybe it's time to believe that it's not by might, nor by power, by this spirit. Maybe it's time to say, what are you, mighty mountain? What are you, mighty mountain? I think most of us really are good at talking to God about our problems, isn't it? We always do that. It just comes so natural. We talk to God about our problems. Maybe going forward, what you need to do is talk to your problems about God. What we need to do, what we need to start doing is do talk to our problems about God. Let me, let me point this out. You need to start preaching the promises of God to your problems. You need to preach the goodness of God to your problems. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You need to preach the authority of Christ to your problems. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You need to preach the power of God. He's able to do immeasurably more than we can speak or even imagine according to his power at work within us. You need to preach the love of God to your problems. I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the presence nor the future, nor any power, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, the third thing we need to do is we need to speak to our mountain. We need to speak to our mountain. We need to speak to our mountain the promises of God. We need to speak to our mountain the goodness of God. We need to speak to our mountain the love of God. We need to speak to our mountain the power of God. Listen to me, there is power in the Word of God. You need to really grab hold of that. There is power. I've, I've, I, I can't remember where I got this, but I read one of the books, and it was talking about faith is focus. Faith is focus. Listen, you can focus on your problems, or you can focus uh, on the promises of God. One way or the other, <laughs> your focus is going to determine your reality. Your focus is going to determine your reality. Where your focus is, the type of fruit you will bear. If your focus is on fear, that's where you will reap. If your focus is on anxiety, that's where you will reap. Whatever your focus is, that's what you will get. You need to speak to your mountains. Listen to Mark 11, verse 23. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain... Be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. You need to speak to that mountain. Whatever you say to that mountain, you have to say to that mountain, be gone. And do not doubt and believe in your heart. I believe some of us here this morning are praying about things. We've been praying about those mountains for long enough. Maybe it's time for us to instead speak to those mountains. We need to speak to those mountains. You don't need prayer about fear anymore. You need to speak, fear, I command you to live in Jesus' name. I refuse to allow you to control my life. Be gone. 
instead of begging God for healing, maybe it's time to talk to that sickness. Sickness, you have no right in my body. I'm the child of the Most High God. You are not welcome in my body. I'm not asking you to leave. I'm not asking you to leave. I'm commanding you to leave now from my body in Jesus' name. If you speak, if you're on your mountain to move, you need to speak to that mountain. I've learned if you don't talk to your mountains, your mountains will talk to you. I'm telling you, if you don't speak to, uh, talk to your mountains, your mountains will talk to you. What do I mean with that? If you go around all day talking, uh, it will talk to you. So you can go throughout all day. If you, 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 you feel like you're never going to get out of debt, uh, you will never get well, you never succeed in life, uh, you, you, you're a failure, uh, you will never uh, find the right partner, that is your mountain that's talking to you all throughout the day. When you feel that depression coming, that's the mountain that's you facing on that day. You can either sit back and uh, allow those mountains to talk to you and control your life, and, and please don't get this wrong. You still have your salvation. You still go to heaven. But what's happening is those, those mountains is stopping you from enjoying life in this earth. You see, knowing the truth will set us free. Knowing the truth. Don't allow that mountain to control your life. At some point, we need to stand up and say, hold up. Wait a minute. I'm in control here. Mountain, be moved. We need to be mountain movers. It's, it's important for us to know God's word. But how many know it's also important for us to apply God's word in our life? Just knowing is not good enough. We need to be able to apply God's word. You see, when you speak words in faith, something happens in the unseen realm. We sang that song earlier this morning. You see, you, when you speak, something happens in the, in, the, in, the, in the spiritual realm. Chains are broken. Forces of evil is defeated. The enemy begins to even tremble. When you say sickness, you have to go in Jesus' name. When you speak rebellion, you can't control my child. Leave my child in Jesus' name. Depression, you cannot steal my joy. Leave in Jesus' name. Addiction. You can stay in my life. Leave in Jesus' name. Come on, there's power. When you speak not in your own authority, you need to realize you have the authority of the Most High God. When you speak with the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, something begins to happen in the atmosphere. You might not see it, but something's taking place. You need to remember that you are a child of God. You need to know who you are. And with the authority that is given you, you need to know that you have the name of Jesus. And he can use that name to command your mountains to move. You might not see the change immediately. I'm telling you, don't be discouraged. It might be days, it might be months, it might be years. But something actually taking place, even though you can't see it. I'm telling you, in the spiritual realm, something is taking place. Just, uh, just remember when Jesus was walking to the town. He was walking to the town. I guess he must have been hungry because uh, he went to a fig tree and he wanted to grab a fig to eat. He got frustrated. Jesus got frustrated because there was nothing on that tree. And he spoke to that tree. He spoke to that tree and said, you will bear no more fruit. Notice, Jesus spoke to the three. People of faith will talk to their obstacles. That's what happens. People of faith will talk to their obstacles. And then Jesus walked away and nothing happened. And I'm sure the disciples must have been asking themselves, um, is Jesus losing his touch or is it, what's going on? What's happening? Because nothing took place. So they walked away. But how many know when they returned back and they walked through the same town, the disciples noticed something when they looked at that tree that Jesus had spoken to. That tree was completely dead. You see, when you speak to your mountain, when you speak to that obstacle, you might not see something taking place. But as you speak God's promises to that thing, something is taking place in the spiritual realm. 
I'm telling you, God's army starts to work in on those things. You might not see it in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realms, God is at work. That mountain might look big and strong as it was looking before, but if you stay strong in your faith and you keep speaking to that mountain, calling it gone, and then start calling yourself, I am blessed. I am healthy. I am rich. I am strong. I'm victorious. And one day you will see that mountain move in Jesus' name. Honestly, uh, there's been so many things in my own personal life that I struggled with. From teenage years, I, I, I just, I was a rebel. I was always uh, try to be as difficult as I can be for my parents. <laughs> uh, I got into drugs, alcohol, everything you can name it. You know, when you have those kind of mountains, you know, that you, you know deep inside that you want to change. But when you got those type of mountains, especially addiction, is horrible. It's so hard. And you can't do it on your own. But when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. When I got saved, I, I understood the truth. I understood the power that is in the name of Jesus. And those, the same power allowed me to be released of those things. I want to tell you, stop relying on yourself. Start trusting on God. I want to, I want to just uh, also just remind you of David. I think I love David. The story of David and Goliath is so amazing. You see, when I think of David, when he faced Goliath, everyone around him, right, was talking about this mountain. How this mountain was so big and strong. Do you know what happens when you, instead of speaking to your mountain, you start talking about your mountain? What happens? That mountain keeps getting bigger and bigger, stronger and stronger, and it actually looks unmovable. It's interesting. This young man, he was literally 17 years old, and he understood this principle of talking to the mountain and not talking about the mountain. You see, when he saw the Goliath... He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defile the armies of the living God? David straight away started to speak to his mountain. People around him began to laugh. Like, who is this person, this young man? What does he know about fighting? Even Goliath started laughing at David. Am I a dog that that you come with me with a stick? David didn't just pray. That he would defeat Goliath. He didn't just believe he would defeat Goliath. No, David spoke to that mountain. He looked him in the eye and said, Goliath, you come against me with the sword and the shield. And I come against you in the name of the Lord of Israel. In other words, you've come to me with swords. But I have something much better. Something much stronger. I'm coming with the name. That name, demons tremble. (laughs) I've got forces of heaven backing me up. Listen to how he spoke to his mountain. Goliath, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I will defeat you and feed your head to the birds of the air. Listen. (laughs) He knew he was. He was only 17 years old, but he understood the principle that we shouldn't talk about our mountains. We should speak to our mountains. Can I ask the worship team to come up, please, as I wrap up this message this morning? You see, Goliath had terrorized the people of God laughing at their disbelief. We have a great picture of what's going on today in our church. In the church of the body, not just our church. In the church of the body. The enemy is looking and laughing and terrorizing people because we don't understand. We lack the understanding of the power of the name of Jesus. We lack the understanding that we have promises that God's given us. And we need to use those promises to speak to our mountains. There's power in the word of God. Just like David spoke to his mountain, we need to be like 
mountain, Goliath, this day the Lord has delivered you into my hands. I will defeat you and feed your head to the birds of the air. Can I ask that we stand together? You see, when Zechariah spoke, it was a word from God. This promise, this vision is going to be brought into completion, not through the strong arms of flesh, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Second thing, you need, the, you need more of the Holy Spirit. Then you return to your face, your mountains, and, uh, and you have to say, you mighty mountain, move. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that mountain. Can I ask that this morning? I want us to shout to those mountains that you're facing this morning. Can we put what we just heard into practice? All around this place, I want us to shout to those mountains that we're facing. Depression. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Anxiety. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Loneliness. I command you. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Family problems. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Broken hearts. I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. Employment problems, I command you to be solved in Jesus' name. Sickness, I command you to leave my body in Jesus' name. Speak to your mountain this morning. Speak to your mountain. Speak to your mountain. Speak to your mountain. Come on. Come on, we can do better than that. Yes. 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 Yes! Yes, Father, you made a way, Father. You made a way. Can I can I ask with every head bow? We just want to pray right now. We want to pray. Father, thank you for your word. We thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that it doesn't return void. I pray that God you would quicken your promise, your truth to our hearts today. Lord, I pray that you would give that you would give us the faith to believe again. Lord, forgive us for those things that we have tolerated in our lives. Those mountains that we tolerated in our life. You didn't come to die on the cross so we will live with these mountains. So we just want to pray, Father, give us faith to believe again. We know that your plans and purposes for ours are far greater than that. You know what? With every eyes closed, every head bowed, it won't be right for me not to give, not to give you the opportunity to come to Jesus this morning. If you are here today, you've never made a decision to put your faith in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that this is where the spiritual journey begins. It is this first step that's the game changer. I want you to invite you this morning. Actually, Jesus is even expanding, extending his invitation this morning. And he said, follow me. He said, follow me. How do we do that? How do we follow him? You have to take the first step. You need to surrender your life to His Lordship. You need to give Him control. 
you need to put him on the driver's seat. If you are here this morning and you never made that decision, I want to pray a simple prayer for you. But with every eye closed, every head bowed, I want to pray. I want. I want to ask you to put your hands up if you haven't made that decision. We want to pray for you. If you haven't made that decision, today is the day. I'm telling you. Anyone here? Don't worry about the next person next to you. Oh, I can see a hand there. Excellent. I can see a hand. Anyone else? Anyone else this morning? Put put it high, high up so I can I know it's you. I can see that hand, young man. Wonderful. Come on, can we give Jesus a praise this morning? Anyone else? Anyone else? Wonderful. So the ushers will bring you a pack. Take that pack and just fill your information so we can stay in touch. But it's got some materials in there that's going to help you to grow. But all together, we want to see, uh, just pray this prayer. And then we'll just continue with the worship a little bit longer. And if there's anyone else that needs prayer, I want to encourage you to come forward and we'll pray for you as well. Repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in the need of Savior. I've got some mountains in my life. I need your help to move. God, I pray that you would do what you promised. That you will forgive my sins and set me free. And that you, God, you would help me step into a relationship that you want me to have with you. So I confess my sins this morning. And profess my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that I can do all things. Through Christ who has strengthened me. So right here, right now. I take this first step. And I receive you. As my Lord and Savior over my life in the precious name of Jesus I pray Amen 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 Come on We can do better than that We hope you've been inspired and challenged by this message For more information about Withenshaw Community Church Manchester please visit Withenshaw Community Church dot org